It's time for a rant, a gripe, a bone to pick with the Unity editor that I bet 90-odd percent of you developers have come across. You see, when I'm playing my game and I have an audio source with a clip, why or why is there no editor button to play it? I mean, seriously, I've watched so many devs click the play on awake toggle and then enable and disable their audio source component just to test that audio in place. You know, with the local reverb and other sound effects that that audio source happens to live within. Well, not anymore. I have the tools and after this video, so will you. Let's start with a caveat. If you don't have effects running on your audio sources and are fine simply playing the audio in the project view and deciding, yep, that's the one you want, that makes you happy, well, I'm happy for you. But don't hang up the video just yet. Go get this asset from the asset store and maybe consider leaving a nice review for it. Instead of having to press play in that little preview window each time you want to listen to your audio, you can simply double click it on the project view. That's all it does. It's really useful and also it's free. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Now, for you others who are looking to up your tools game, let's get into building that audio source play button. Now we could try simply abusing the editor by overriding the audio sources editor, but we're gonna screw over its pretty layout. Now we could hack the hell out of it to get that pretty layout back. And you know, if you've watched my videos that I do like a good hack job, but instead I'm gonna be lazy here and I'm gonna to add to its menu. You see each and every component in Unity, that's Unity's and yours, has a right click menu path. You just need to know what it is. In this case for the audio source, it's context slash audio source. And we can append whatever name for our menu onto this. In this case, I'm gonna append the word play. Now this path will go into a menu item attribute and we'll stick that above a static method. In this case, we'll call it play audio source menu item. Now we're gonna pass into this menu item, the menu command, which gives us some context. And from that context, we can pull out our audio source component and then run its play method. Now we're good little tools developers, so we like to make things neat. And in this case, we know we're only gonna be using this while we're playing the editor. So let's knock out a validation menu item. We'll add the validate flag to this menu item and set it to true. And we'll return whether we're actually playing in the editor or not. Basically, validating menu items run when the context menu is called up and they'll dictate whether they are active or they're grayed out, as you can see here. So here we are with my character opening this gate. Listen to that car door audio pretending to be an emergency push bar door. Now, here is the sound while we're not playing the game. And here it is while we're playing the game. You can hear the reverb, right? And that's why we want to have the play button. It lets us test the audio works with the effects. Let's us swap out some other audio that might be better, tweak the pitch, the volume, distances, all that good stuff that we can then simply copy and paste when we're out of the play mode. No more playing and getting to the gate, testing it over and saying, oh, that doesn't sound right stopping, playing the game again, going back to the gate, opening it, oh, the distance not right. You get the idea, I could tweak everything, copy and paste, and it's a one job done. Now, I showed this to my friend who paused for a second and said, but that's two clicks. So let me show you something that might actually blow your mind about getting that one click option. Now we add an initialize on load method and this is gonna be above a static method or our own that will call the editor class finished default header GUI. And this in turn is gonna be a callback that calls our method on finished header GUI. Super original naming I know, but let's carry on. Now blasting through, we'll check if the editor passed is a game object, and if it is, that it has an audio source component. If it does have that audio source component, we're gonna add a label audio source, and we're gonna check if it's playing or if it's stopped and we'll add buttons for each of these. I'm just gonna steal the Unity icons here using the editor GUI utility. Now, as you can expect for both of those functionalities, we're gonna play the audio source or we're gonna stop it. And we'll wrap that into a nice pretty little layout and jump back into Unity. Now, when we select a game object that has an audio source, our header adds a play button and we don't even have to scroll down to get to the audio source to play it. How's that for one click? Now, of course, if you really wanna go nuts, you can create an attribute and look that up and make contextual functionality everywhere. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see how that's done. It's how I add, for instance, my little component search tool here that lets me narrow down the component I want to get to if I have a lot of components on my game object. Now, hopefully my friend will be happy. They know who they are. And I'm glad they're my friend because they push me that little bit further every time I do something. 
Moral of this story is, if your friends don't push you to do better, push yourself to get better friends. Oh, and Sonic is better than Mario, Free Run is the best anime, and Marmite over PB&J's every day of the week.